this these pictures show the process from which I maintain the measurements. The left side picture is the freeze frame photo from the video, and the right picture is what I saw in image J. If you notice, there's a very small line that occurs that I made to start in the middle of the maxilla to the middle of the mandible. And this gave me a pixel rating, which image J converted into a millimeter rating. Measurement, sorry, not read. The second outcome measure was speech production accuracy. And I used the sounds and words subtest of the Goldman Fristo third edition, as well as the vowel accuracy and the overall articulatory accuracy from the DEMS. Um, the median ratings from the three blended readers were also used for intelligibility in C the CSIM, BIT, and pic the picture book description. The results, results for participant one, as you see in this graph, shows that jaw lateralization decreased, however, minimally. And after jaw therapy specifically, there's an extensive amount of variability versus there was variability after a speech therapy and minimal decrease in lateralization. Speech production accuracy with regarding the phonetic inventory, there are minor changes that occurred all throughout after each intervention. Intelligibility, the same. There was minor changes that varied non-systematically across each element that we looked at. Um, regarding motor speech skill, there were also minor changes for the vowel accuracy and for the overall articulatory accuracy. Participant two, revealed very different results. Jaw lateralization for her, she started with the speech therapy. 50% um, of her measurements after baseline, after speech therapy, measured below the baseline, her measurements at baseline. After the jaw therapy, 100% of the measurements resulted below the baseline. Um, and in between the interventions, there was a return to baseline in jaw lateralization measurements, just shown here in this graph. Speech production accuracy for participant two, um, phonetic inventory resulted in essentially no changes. Intelligibility after the speech therapy resulted in very minor to none, no changes. And then after jaw therapy, there were changes. However, they were non-systematic and varied. Motor speech skill, vowel accuracy started at a high level at baseline. And so she demonstrated a ceiling effect. Um, there was an increase in overall accuracy after speech therapy, and then a return back to baseline after the jaw therapy for motor speech skill. Overall articulatory accuracy. So jaw, lateraliz jaw lateralization during single word productions appeared to have decreased after just four sessions of the jaw therapy for both children. However, there was minimal degrees of change and extensive variability, which makes it difficult to tell whether these changes were meaningful or not. Regarding speech production accuracy, there were also changes, but they were minimal and random, non-systematic after each of the interventions. There were a number of limitations that occurred during this investigation. First of all, the total number of sessions that was allotted for each intervention was not enough. Additionally, inadequate amount of practice occurred because Whereas the jaw stabilization protocol called for practice 10 times per day for a minimum of one week, the practice of 10 times happened only during the session, which was four. This was intentional though, because we wanted to make sure that the practice was completed and we wanted to make sure the, com the practice was completed correctly. Additionally, there was no home program assigned. In clinical practice, in my experience, I've found that once I recommend a home program or that 
parents practice something, that's not a guarantee that that practice will occur. Oftentimes, it just does not happen at all. So we wanted to control for that by making sure the practice happened within the session. Additionally, there were two children who were enrolled in the study. That simply was not enough. Future considerations should include longer baselines to establish some stability at the beginning of the, set of the study. Also longer intervention periods and the simultaneous implementation of both interventions during a session. In conclusion, jaw stabilization therapy might be a te technique that is feasible if we want to reduce jaw lateralization in children ages four and five. Over this study, jaw lateralization decreased after only four sessions of the jaw therapy for both participants. However, speech intelligibility or its speech production resulted differently. The changes were random, they were minimal, they were variable, they were not systematic to either type of intervention or to either participant. Therefore, the results provide no evidence or conclusivity that there's a relationship between changes in jaw lateralization and changes in speech intelligibility. However, in the future, I would like to conduct this study again with longer baseline periods, more sessions per intervention, as well as more participants to see if we could actually get some conclusivity to that issue that is not ever talked about. Thank you so much for attending this poster session. I hope the rest of the conference goes fantastically. Um, and hope that you found this as interesting as I do. And I also hope that in the future, we get to meet everyone face to face. Thank you so much. Have a great day.